All right, on today's video, I just want to take a quick second show you a few different knots and a lash that will really set you up for future lessons coming up out in the field there. So we're going to start out with some different nomenclature. I'm going to go through a couple simple basic knots, and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to tie those things up real fast so you guys can practice that on your free time there. Uh, it's pretty chilly in Alaska right now, so we've got to do most of our stuff indoors. It's about zero degrees out. Uh, we only have about two and a half hours of daylight, so it's really difficult to film stuff out there. Plus, it's dumping snow right now. So I've got a couple of knots for you, so stick around, pay attention. I'm going to show you guys some, hopefully, some cool stuff here. All right, so i got the camera set up kind of from my point of view here, so you can kind of follow along with exactly what I'm talking about. i got two different lines here. This is typical, we call it 550 cord. It's paracord. It holds, uh, it's, it can withstand 550 pounds of tensile. It holds, it holds 550 pounds of tensile strength here. So we call it survival nails. This is typical we use out in the field there. So definitely going to practice with this kind of, uh, line here. You can use any kind of line out there. The principles are all the same. The bigger, the smaller, doesn't matter. This thing matter. There's a couple different new, no, couple different small considerations when you're using big line versus small line. You can put, mix the two together, and I'll talk about that here in just a little second. So before we get into that, we'll talk about a couple nomenclature items here. So anytime you're working with a line, the very end of this thing is going to be the running end. We call that. The middle of it's going to be the body of the line, and the very the very end of the line it's not really doing anything. It's going to be the standing end. So. Uh, we call this a bite. We basically just pull the line over itself like this. We're just kind of looping up and over. That's a bite. This is overhand loop where the line goes over itself, kind of like a twisty motion there, and the line's going over the top. Overhand loop. This is underhand loop if it's line's going underneath itself. All right, we call this a turn where it goes around something. If it goes around that object, it continues in the same exact direction that it's trying to go. We call it a round turn, just like so. All right, so the easiest knot I can show you right now is called a square knot. It's basically it's used for tying two like diameter pieces of line together, like these two pieces of 550 cord here. So just keep an eye on which line is doing all the work here. Whatever line does all the work, you can make sure it does the entire work for the entire set of the knot here. So I'm gonna start with the right side here. So the first thing you do is take the right, put it over to the left, this green one here, twist that one around the white, and we go left over the right, and twist that one around. Notice how this green one does all the work there. Pull it tight and you should have two horseshoes coming together just like so. Now depending on how much snow and ice and all that is out there, I depends on how long these tails right here I leave. I use at least uh, an inch or two or so is more than enough. To strike the knot or run tight, all I'm going to do here is take the body of the line and the running end of the line and I'm going to separate the two. You'll see it pop free like that and you'll be able to fish the line out. So real fast, I'm going to show you again. Just remember opposites. So if I start with the right, i got to do the left here. So right over left, twist it around. And then left over the right. Twist it around again. Get your two horseshoes coming together, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that knot in there. So once again, this is used for tying two like diameter pieces of line together. This will not work, however, if I'm trying to tie this small diameter line to like a large, very large rope itself. So it won't work out very well there. Next one I'm gonna show you is called a, it's just a fixed loop. There's a couple different variations here. Uh, the first one isn't considered a survival knot just because it loses a lot of tensile strength. Uh, and also is very difficult to untie. So a typical survival knot, the char characteristics of it is it retains its strength and it's very easy to tie and untie and as it retains that uh, tensile strength characteristic. Anytime I put a turn or flex in this line, just like so, it lowers that tensile strength of that line there. So I want to minimize it as much as I can. So this first one's pretty easy. Just take a bite, about four inches long here, the tail, four or five or so. Then this bite, this loop right rolling right here, I'm just going to go ahead and do an overhead knot with that. Wrap it around. Pretty straightforward. Pull it through. You see there I got myself a fixed loop. Pretty straightforward. Problem with this one is, like I said, it's very difficult to untie. If I put a lot of tension on this thing, if I built a shelter out of it, it's very difficult to untie that thing. So I'm most likely going to have to go ahead and cut that off, especially if it's, once again, extremely cold out there. <clears throat> easier one I can do, it's going to be a lot easier for me to untie, it's called the bowline. A couple different ways a lot of people do, do, do this not differently. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Easiest way I can show you is first of all start out with a slip loop. So basically the way I'm going to do this is take the line, create myself that underhand loop. So the line's going underneath the line, underneath right here. Reach through this loop, grab onto the body, pull the body up and through. And basically what I've done here is I've started the fixed loop, or the, excuse me, the slip loop. If I tie this knot all the way down, now this thing will slide just like I want it to be. And I can actually untie this fairly easy by just grabbing the tail, grabbing the body, pulling the two together. Let's pop them down. So I'm going to show that one again. Underhand loop. 
reach through there, grab the body, pull the body up and through. So to make this into a bow in a pretty easy way is instead of tightening this thing all the way down so I keep this knot right here fairly loose, I'll just take this tail right here, put it through the loop, and bite it back over the top. You can see how it's doing that through and bite it back over the top there. All I'm gonna take now is I grab this body right here, I'm gonna pull and it's gonna slide up and over. You see it slides into place. And it should have just kind of like a triangle shape going on right there. That's it. That's your fixed loop right there. So easy way to untie this is you see this part right here, it's going over the body right here. Take that, push it down, loosens the entire knot up. And once again, I can really crank on this thing without losing or without uh, having a hard time untying that thing. So I'll show you one more time. So slip loop, reach through there, grab the body, pull it up and through. Don't tighten it all the way down. Just take this tail right here, push it through, bite back over the top. Just like so, and I'm gonna grab the body here and I'm gonna let it pull tight. So really easy way to create a slip loop. Little variation to this one here, say I uh, don't necessarily have the loop itself, maybe I wanna tie this to something. Like for example, if I wanna, let's say I wanna tie, say I wanna tie a bowline inside a bowline. I've got that right in front of me here right now. So, so I can do is create the first part of the bowline with this green line right here. So slip loop, reach through, grab the body, pull it up. Instead of finishing off like we normally did, I'm gonna take this tail right here, put it through whatever I'm trying to tie it to. Look, right now I'm just gonna tie it off to this other bow in here. And then I'm gonna finish off the exact same way. So put it through that slip loop hole, bite back over the top, pull tight. Now I got two bow ones holding against each other. Once again, to untie those things, just push this piece down right here, push it down, and it'll loosen up this entire knot and it'll fall apart for you. So let me show you real fast another example of how I can use this bow in here. All right, so let's say I want to tie the bow in off to this canteen here. Here, I just want to tie it right to the loop I got on top of this right there. So all I got to do here is start the bow in with that overhand loop. Let's reach through, excuse me, the underhand loop because the line's going underneath the body here. Reach through the loop, grab on the body, pull it up and through. Take this tail now, before I finish it off, I'm gonna put it through where we're gonna tie it to, and reach through, and bite it back over the top. You guys see that right there, and I pull this tight, and we'll tighten down around whatever it is I wanna tie it to, just like so. All right, so what I'm gonna try to simulate right now, to readjust the camera, sorry, is I'm gonna try to simulate tying off from my leg, which is my shelter, to a stick or something like that, a stake that I put in the ground, something that well, I can tie off to. This is gonna be a clove hitch, which is what I'm representing right now. So, go around, the object, whatever it is, set myself up by going over on the top of the little object. I'm gonna cross over and come around to the bottom of the object. So on the top, do wrap, go on the cross over, like creating the X, and go on the bottom side of it. Basically, all I'm gonna do is go around the item, the object, wrap it around on one side, cross over, you can see that X I just made right there, cross around the other side. I'm just gonna keep this tight. I'm kind of holding the dowel. It's a little bit tough, but so once I have that X right there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger on it to keep it from loosening up. And now I could take this line right here and fish it underneath this line. Can I see what I'm doing there? It's gonna tighten back around itself. So I'm gonna spread this thing out kind of so you can see what's going on here. But basically, what's going on now, as you can see, it's going in the middle going around the object, crossing over, and then I'm putting the line underneath itself. You notice how it's kind of slipping and sliding on this dowel just a little bit. It doesn't have a lot of friction on this material here. If you have a lot of bark and that kind of thing on there, it works a lot better. So what I can do is take this line and kind of do half inches from there on out. So just take the line, slip underneath itself again. I'm gonna do this over and over and over. So really simple, it's a clove hitch. Uh, we use this all the time to kind of finish off the knots and lashes and everything else that we use, which I'm gonna show you in future videos, some different lashes that, and different hitches as far as the trucker's hitch, the shear lash, and the square lash. And this will really kind of complete the uh, shelter building excursions out in the field there. And Mr. Cat wants to play as well, so.
Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you get a lot out of this and you learn these different knots. And this is going to build upon, this video here is going to build upon other videos I'm going to shoot later on where I'm actually building shelters out in the environment and doing all, all kinds of the survival odds and ends. So hopefully you, you learn a lot from this and you remember these knots next time uh, we're doing another shelter out in the field.